Hi, this is Stephen Brower. Um, this is a brief overview of using a hash function as a way for finding information. Uh, this presentation is really generic. It's not getting into uh, specifically how Java does it. It was just uh, going into how we would set up a hash uh, in order to search for information. Um, so the premise behind it is, suppose we want to physically find some data, um, and th the data either on a storage medium or the data in memory. Um, and we have a key that is used to uniquely identify the, the, well, the data that we're uh, looking for. What we can do is we can come up with a hash function that, based on that key, is going to return a physical address. Uh, for finding uh, the, the data. This whole thing depends on how efficient the hash function is. If you have a hash function that just returns one, no matter what, it's, it's no good. Um, the example we'll use here is we'll, we'll actually use an array. So um, let's take RVCC, for example. Um, the G numbers for RVCC, um, there's eight digits in uh, the G numbers. So it's from G... Not that anyone has the lowest, but 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 to G9999999. That would be the range of, uh, of G numbers, 100 million possibilities in terms of the G numbers. But we only have at Rountain Valley, uh, for the purposes of this, let's just say we have 10,000 students. Well, suppose we want to hold the records for those 10,000 students into memory. Now, yes, in, in theory, <clears throat> We could just do a search on the array on um, finding what we have, but it's, you know, searching through. <coughs> if we use a hash function, we can, in a few number of steps, find what it is that we're, or the specific record we're looking for. So what are you talking about, Brower? Okay, so this here represents all the possible G numbers that um, could exist, because the fact that we have eight digits, so it's the 100 million possible values from 0 to 9999999. Um, now, the idea is that we use a hash function on the G number, and what it will produce is a subscript. Now, I made the comment that if we're only going to have about 10,000 students, that we actually could have an array of 10,000 elements, and that's quite possible to fit that uh, in, into memory. Um, for the purposes of this example, what we're going to use for the hash function is we're just going to do square root, and the idea behind the floor is meaning we'll chop off uh, the decimals. Um, so um, first, let's take a look at storing into the array. So suppose we do have a G number. Suppose we have uh, the G number 555123. Uh, we've passed that into the hash function, which again is going to be the square root. The value would come up with 745. So then we would store this 555123 at location 745. Suppose we have another G number, the 789123345, pass that into the hash function, which is the square root, come up with 883, sorry, 8883, and so that's where the 789123345 uh, would be stored. So now on finding, so suppose we're searching, for 7891234.5, we would perform the hash on it, which is the square root, come up with 883, and then we take a look to see, well, do we actually have the data there? We do, and so we found uh, what we're looking for. And uh, if we were to count the steps, so this right here is being a square root, that would be one step. This going to a specific element in the array and looking at this value, um, well, that would be the second step. Uh, so it's just, it would be, in the best case scenario, just two steps to find what we're searching for. Um, but <laughs> one of the issues we run into is that because when we have a range of numbers, two numbers could match to the same subscript. So, uh, you know, currently we do have at 883, that's 7891234.5. Suppose we want to store. 7891786.2. So we take that 7891786.2, do the square root of it, and we come up with, oops, 883. 
Um, so we can't store it because there already is a value there. So what do we do? How do we handle a conflict uh, in this situation? Well, there's uh, two approaches. Um, one is we just add one to the subscript. So if we're trying to store that 789.178.62 uh, and it comes up to 8883, I'm sorry, 8883, we add one to the subscript 8884 and then we store uh, the value there. Later when we do a find, we would do the square root of the number. Yeah, that's the hash function that we're doing. Um, so the 789.178.62 uh, we would look at 883, it's not there. And so what we would do is we would go through the approach, then look at the next one. Um, so in finding, then it would uh, find it the same way. Another approach is to actually create a linked list at the location, meaning that the 789.178.62 maps to 883. Um, what is at uh, 8883 is the 789.12345, um, but since if we're trying to do the store, since there already is a value there, then we extend the linked list and we add another item here. This is the 789.17862. Um, so later in a search, if we're looking for 789.17862, we do the hash function. We take a look here. And oh, we didn't find what we wanted. So then we march down the linked list, which in this case is the first one, and we find what it is that we're um, searching for. Okay, so um, the big O, best case scenario. So on the store, the best case scenario is we do the hash function on our key, and this the example we use is our G number, and that would only take one step. Now this is assuming that we can just have a single calculation for coming up with uh, the hash function. Then what we do is we take a look at the array at the element whose subscript that is that the hash function produced and we see is um, the value or is is the value free meaning there's nothing there. Um, so we check to see if it's free and then if it is free then we actually do the store. So that would be one, two, three steps which is of order one. On the find same thing. We take our G number we do the hash function on uh, uh, the G number. Um, so the, the hash number, the performing the hash itself is one step. We look at that subscript and we see, is it there? Um, and we find it there, so we found it. So that's two steps. So the best case scenario, when we haven't hit a conflict, um, it is order one for finding and for storing in terms of the array. When we do have a conflict, though, so in the worst case scenario, we do a worst case in the store. We do the hash function on the key. That's a step. We look at the subscript to see if it's free. And, oh, it's not. Um, that was a step. Okay, so now we have to do with the conflict. Well, if we add one, that's a step. And then we check to see, is it free? Well, in terms of the worst case scenario, it wouldn't be free. And so the number of times that we would iterate through this, well, that's going to depend. It's going to depend on how well the hash function is written. It's going to depend on the distribution of numbers that we have, the number of values that we're trying to store. In the, in the example of the Raritan Valley one, for lower ends of the G number, there's only a handful of uh, numbers that will map to the same subscript. Um, you know, like if you're talking about how many things have a square root of one, how many things have a square root of two, how many things have a square root of three, there's not many in the lower numbers. But when you get down to 9,999, or up to 9,999, uh, there can be um, close to 20,000 uh, uh, different G numbers that will have the same square root. Well, in the specific example of Rent Valley, if we only have 10,000 students, well, we can't have 20,000 hits or, or, or misses in a sense because if we only have 10,000 students, the most it would be um, would be 10,000. Um, so, yeah, I know I'm putting an answer here. This is one of those things that's going to depend on the specific hash function. So, uh, depending on the hash that's being used, depending on the range of values, depending on the number of values being stored, um, that number. Um, it can creep up in, uh, in a sense, um, but the hope is that a hash number is developed that is not going to have as many 
um, 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 conflicts. Uh, so yes, I know I, did, I didn't answer it here. I, I, I guess what, one thing I'm trying to say is, if you come up with a bad hash, so suppose our hash function is just returning one, period. No matter what the G number is, we return one. Then we would actually have every single element trying to go to element one. And if we use the linked list approach, then we'd have a linked list of all the possible um, students, which means it's going to go down 10,000. Uh, in the case of the students, we have 10,000 students uh, in order to find it. Now that's Hopefully we're not going to come up with a hash function that everything maps to one element for all the data that we have, but I'm really just trying to illustrate that although in the best case scenario we can get great performance, if we botch the hash function, it's no better than doing uh, a sequential um, um, search. So depending on the function that we have, depending on the range values that we have, um, hopefully that we're getting something that's closer to the order one and not as much in terms of uh, the order end.